and welcome to the Practical Prophetic, where prophetic ministry is made practical. I'm Beth Wingate, I'm your host, and welcome to the podcast. On our podcast today, we are going to continue talking about dreams and visions, and we're going to use our reference scripture out of Job 33:15 that says, In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men as they slumber in their beds, the Lord opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. So we know that God speaks to us in dreams and visions. And we're basing our entire study off of the word, Hebrew word, Naba, which is represented by Strong's H. 5012, and in your King James Bible is often translated as to prophesy or prophesying. And so that means to just be generally inspired of the Holy Spirit, typically through our five senses. But our dreams are also an extension of our five senses, because in our dreams, we often see and we hear. And so today I have another person back on the show. I have a dear friend. Her name is Lisa Higginbotham. She's here to share with us about a dream she has had and how it ties into her testimony. So welcome to the show, Lisa. Hey, Miss Ben. Thank you. Yes, I'm so excited and I haven't heard this yet. So I'm excited to hear uh, all the, you know, the details and the prophetic side of your testimony. I've heard a little bit about it. And so I'm super excited and I'm just going to sort of flip it over to you. And just let you go ahead and share uh, what the Lord's put on your heart and about the dreams and visions you've had. Okay. Well, uh, I definitely believe that um, God speaks in in dreams and visions, and uh, I've seen him work that way in my life. And I can go back into my childhood and see kind of how he was um, using the things in my in my life to kind of put together my story. Uh, So I'm just going to start there. Uh, My childhood is very ideal. Uh, I'm a preacher's kid. Uh, uh, my parents fostered children when I was growing up. I went to a Christian school. I got good grades. I was salutatorian in my class. Uh, I studied music when I was growing up. You know, I had a very, very blessed childhood, but I was molested when I was a child. And that kind of planted some things in me that I didn't understand it and know as a little girl, you know, but they kind of developed later in my life. And um, as a teenager, it really began to, um, I think, develop as a rebellious spirit. Um, I fought with my mother a lot, all the time. Uh, and then when I got into college, all of that just really came to the surface. Uh, I played in the band at college and um, met some people from different backgrounds from what I had grown up in, um, much more loose backgrounds than what I had grown up in. My household was very strict, um, but, uh, you know, I was invited to experiment with some substances and um, at that point, I began to just become like a party. Everything was a party all the time. That's what I lived to do. Um, and in October of 2000, uh, I was arrested. I had made an illegal turn. And so I was arrested, pulled over, and I had uh, marijuana and pills and alcohol and, um, you know, baggies and, you know, all kind of stuff in my car. And so I went through the court system and um, I was very blessed to have come out with three years probation. I probably should have received a much stiffer penalty than that, but that's what God saw fit to give me. So uh, that was in 2000. And in 2001, I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I was I was running. I was running for a lot of my young adult life, trying to get away from, you know, the things that were inside of me that I was I had battled with and was still battling with. And so uh, I, I went to Charlotte and when I was when I got there, I just fell deeper into sin. I really initially moved thinking that it would help me get a new start, you know, after being arrested and everything. I really wanted a fresh start. And um, so I moved up there and the very opposite came true. Uh, I fell deeper into sin. I got onto harder drugs. Uh, I ended up uh, pregnant and addicted to crack and I was homeless and I was an abused woman. And um, I really just, I mean, really the bottom of the barrel then. Um, uh, I came home briefly to give birth to my son uh, because I just felt like I I couldn't give birth there safely. And so uh, I gave birth to my oldest son, Cannon, in Birmingham in October of 2002. Uh, And then I went right back to Charlotte because all of those things that uh, I had been doing just created those ties in me that I, I had to keep running back to that. So 
Um, finally, I, you know, in, and in that time, I kind of, when I was pregnant with him and giving birth, I kind of went back and forth a few times um, seeking safety, and then I would go right back to the situation. Uh, but finally in 2003, uh, in the about May, I think it was, I moved back to Alabama um, for, for good. I was done, uh, and I moved back for good. But I still had those same things that I was dealing with, those same addictions, those same things I was running from. Um, still same life, just the same life, same same story, just a different location. And in July of 2003, I was arrested again, this time for not uh, following the rules of my probation. And so um, in August of 2003, uh, I went to Teen Challenge, uh, and that is where my life really changed. Um, I met God in a jail cell, and he changed my life. Um, but Teen Challenge taught me how to live how to live um, the life that God created for me to live. And um, so that was a long year, but I will forever be grateful for what um, what it did for me and in my life. And in August of 2004, I graduated uh, and I went back to court that day, the day of my one year. Uh, and I saw my judge and um, I was released from my court obligations. Um, uh, my parents helped me pay my fines and the judge said, uh, that he had seen such a difference uh, made in my life that um, he, he felt like it was safe to let me go uh, and release me from my court obligations. So I moved in with my parents and um, I just basically lived at church. Um, that was, you know, after being in Teen Challenge for a year, that 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 was that was where I had learned to live. So, I, you know, I, I was at church all the time. Um, and um, that was in 2004. So in January of 2005, uh, I got a job at Garywood Christian School, leading the choir there, teaching music there. Um, that's another person that's special in my life. Um, the pastors there, they they help me when, you know, get back up on my feet there. And then uh, in June of 2005, I really decided I wanted to go back to school and study to become a teacher. I loved teaching. I loved working with the kids. Uh, and I wanted to, you know, do it right and get my degree. So I started back to school. And I was going to school and I was working and going to church and that was my life. <laughs> and then God brought this amazing young man um, to my church to come and find me um, because I had told him, I said, God, if you want me to to get married, you're going to have to bring a man to me. I'm not going to find one. And he did. Uh, he brought wow. me a husband and uh, we met at church. Uh, we dated for several months, nine. I think it was nine months we dated. And then in June of 2006, we were married. So um, both of us being single parents, it was good to kind of feel like we finally had a complete household together um, for both of our children. And um, so then in June, uh, I'm sorry, January of 2008, our youngest son, Raiden, was born. And so that was really the completion of our family. Um, finally, you know, and I kind of was in school on and off, you know, having a baby and everything that kind of changed <laughs> my graduation timeline. Right. Uh, but uh, I did graduate. Uh, in May of 2011, I graduated UAB with my degree in elementary education, and uh, I taught in St. Clair County um, for a few years there uh, after I after I got, uh, got my degree, and uh, I was really happy. But around the end of 2013, beginning of 2014, I started to get really sick, um, and I saw doctors, and I saw doctors, and they couldn't tell me what was wrong with me. Um, you know, I had a lot of physical issues going on, um, and I was sick and in bed a lot of the time. And so finally in 2016, I was diagnosed with lupus and Sjogren's and fibro, and I already had migraine um, and all these other issues. And um, so with all of that stuff comes a lot of pain. Um, so I saw a doctor for pain, and um, they started me on uh, Norco pills. And... Um, that was, it was not long after that till I had this dream that I wanted to talk about. Uh, and I really feel like um, God used this dream as, uh, I, I don't know if it was so much a vision as much as just a, a, a warning. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I, I really felt like, it, I mean, most of the time I feel like when I have a dream from the Lord, I don't wake up afraid. I definitely don't. And I didn't after this one. But I knew God was speaking to me that, you know, I needed to watch my steps. Um, 
so and the, and in this dream, um, it starts out where I'm I'm in my parents' um, church, you know, and I was grown, but and my oldest son, you know, I had him with me and everything, um, but there was this pra- this couple leading praise and worship, and they had been housing this young lady, and in that service, she began to um, manifest demonic spirits, and um, so she came, and she was sitting on my left, and my son was on my right, and now he's at older age, okay, so and this is in it, this is in your dream, right, this is in my dream, yes, yes, I'm sorry, did I not, did no, I move I, that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's fine, I, I just want to make sure I understand that uh, in your dream, uh, that that this lady was on one side and your son is on the other yes. side. Yes, yes. And, you know, and I had family members there, like uh, my my parents were there and I had aunts and uncles and, you know, extended family members there. Uh, and like I said, this is in my parents' church. And um, so this young girl is is uh, manifesting and she is like right up on my side. OK, and now I look and my son is older than he was at the beginning of the dream. And so then there's this cat playing evil music on the organ. And this little girl looks at me and she just smirks like something's going on. And there were all these whispers going on. I mean, it, it was it was like um, I know there's a lot going on at one time, uh, but uh, it was just it was it was a lot happening at one time in my dream. And I think that's also, you know, evident of what was going on in my life at the time. So um, anyway, at the end of the church service, this was a church service. OK. And at the end of the service. Uh, a deliverance, they, they started a deliverance to try to drive the demons out of this girl and she wouldn't submit uh, and she was going to leave. So she was like, they were like, well, you got to go. And so she was going to leave, but she was insistent on taking someone with her. Hello. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so um, uh, the church members tried to bind her with a rope and she slipped out of the rope. Uh, right. And just to remind our listeners, this is a dream. <laughs> yes. yes, yes <laughs> Not yes. in real life. It's all in a dream, not in reality. Right. No. So um, so she slipped out of the rope and, and she was trying to take someone with her. And, of course, she came after me um, and I began to run and she was holding narcotic pills in her hand. And wow. so, yeah. And so then it's like, you know, when you're when you're having a dream, it's like a flash and then you're in a different place. And right. so that's kind of what happened. And um, then we were in the my dad loves to my parents love to farm. They have a tractor and they, you know, they've always had stuff like that. And so suddenly we're in the old tractor shed of my childhood home and she's trying to catch me. And like I'm dodging behind and around this tractor and she's on the other side and she's taunting me and uh, she's throwing pills at me. And uh, I managed to get away from her and run towards the highway because my the house I grew up in is like right on the highway. Uh, but she's still like following me and throwing pills at me from a distance. And um, so then I, I tried to turn to go in our neighbor's uh, driveway and then somehow I ended up back at the little church at uh, my parents church. OK. And so now there are glass doors on the inside and wooden doors on the outside. So it's a portal like place, you know, and so in right. between the was a shelf of candy and this girl was back you know in my area again she was back up there and she was snatching candy and my mom was yelling at her to stop and the girl got really angry and she laid a rope like a snare to try to hang me up in um and uh my mom and I both and so we're trying to shake ourselves free and then all of a sudden she like shoots up into the sky and she's got this black coat on and a demonic face that was like blinding and she let out this deafening shriek as she like flew through the air and had a machete and then went flying out of the roof of the church and then everything became dark and still and I woke up so wow so there's a lot to unpack there yeah right I mean well I mean just a ton of imagery but but to make it simple right. and to cut cut through all the uh, allegories here, you know, obviously she represented a demonic stronghold very clear uh, of addiction in your life. Very clear. I mean, yeah. you know, there's there's a ton of symbolism we could draw yeah, from and yeah, probably yeah. dissect so many things in that dream. But uh, the fact that you were in church, I think also uh, it sort of represents that this is a spiritual battle in your life that you were going through at this time. Mm-hmm. And I and. You know, I uh, I don't know. Maybe I, uh, I, this is my thing. OK, so some people will say, like, well, if you're still dealing with that, then you got to there's that phrase. You got to go back around the mountain. You didn't you didn't conquer the, the battle, you know, so that's why God is taking letting you go back around that. But I really think 
um, like in this instance and, you know, in, in some others and some uh, for other people, I think it's more of like a thorn in the flesh of like, not that God gave it to me, but I know that his grace is sufficient. Um, I was driving to the doctor today listening to worship music and all of a sudden I could smell drugs. I mean, Satan just put that in my nose, just auto, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, just out of nowhere, it just, uh, it, it just, I mean, you know, and I haven't been around that in 18 years. Right. Well, I'll jump in right here and just sort of, uh, maybe share my thought on this. Yeah, um, yeah, go for it. so, so my family, and I think I've shared this on here before my family, uh, on both sides of my family tree has had uh, alcoholism uh-huh. and uh, my family has made the decision and, and it really, I have to give credit to my mom. It starts with her uh-huh. that we in our family, because of that, we understand that that can, uh, people's pre, we, you know, science will call it a predisposition right. Right. or maybe a genetic, uh, you know, bend uh-huh. or, or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, but we believe that, uh, That may be true, but also attached to that, I believe, also can be sort of like a um, uh, what I would call a familiar spirit or a a demonic uh, influence, at least at least on the influence level, Mm -hmm. a demonic, Mm -hmm. uh, strong demonic influence in someone's life. So we've made the decision that we are teetotalers. We don't drink uh, champagne. We don't drink champagnes at weddings or wine. You know, we and and I'm not uh, having a debate over alcohol. I'm just saying for us, we've made the decision to completely close the door on alcohol because of the uh, the demonic influence it has had within our family. And I recognize that. So I totally understand what you're saying that um, if you had had, you know, whatever your whatever the vice is. And in Mm -hmm. your case, it was uh, pills or drugs. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, and, and I'm sure a lot of that goes back to your childhood. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously you were self-medicating to treat pain right. that you had. Right. And so, um, so, you know, that to me, the, the dream makes sense. And the fact that the temptation still lingers makes sure. sense because, so, you know, we have to work out sometimes yep. our victory and things. Uh, we can have deliverance, but, uh, maintaining that is self-discipline. I think my, um, I think it was Jensen Franklin, I believe, that always says you cannot bring deliverance to what needs discipline, and you cannot discipline what needs deliverance. Ooh, that's sometimes, good. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's both. You know, oftentimes you have to ha- get deliverance, and then it's a journey of uh, discipline. That's right. Right, mm-hmm. and then it's making wise choices. You know, you if you're in an environment. Let's just take my my particular uh, issue. You know, if I'm in an environment where there's going to be a lot of alcohol and mm-hmm. you know, drinking or let's just say a wine tasting or something, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to put myself in that position because I don't even want the temptation. And I just feel like it's a door that I cannot afford to open and that must right. remain locked in my life. That's right. Same. Same and I hope here. that helps someone. And, you know, I, I think there's no condemnation. You know, I, I had a, I had a revelation as a teenager that temptation is not sin. Right. It is only when we act upon that, that, that temptation yeah. that it becomes mm-hmm. sin. Mm-hmm. That's right. 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 Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, the, the closer, if I feel like sometimes the closer my walk is, the harder it feels like, you know, you go through uh, ups and downs in your walk, not really straying away, but sometimes you just feel more fire and sometimes it feels like it's a little less fire, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I feel like uh, in those times when you are getting closer to God, closer to God, closer to God, I feel like Satan will try to throw some of those old things at you. Like today, he just threw that at me out of no. I mean, like there's no way in the world I would ever go back. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind right. of that he would ever even throw that at me. But it doesn't mean that he's given up. He's, you know, he's still going to try everything and anything in his arsenal to try to uh, trip us up and make us fall. 
Uh, right. And the way we combat that is we just stay really strong yep. in the Lord. And we do that very simply by getting in the word, mm-hmm. by um, mm-hmm. by prayer, by worship, mm-hmm. by um, by also guarding our heart. You know, Adam was given the command to guard and tend his garden. We all yep. have to guard and tend our garden. And that means, you know, just making wise decisions and yep. and not, you know, and and I will say this. I've only known you. Um, you know, in your recent years and as a believer, and it's hard for me to even imagine that that's a part of who you were. Well, and I'm so, so glad <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what kind of work God, God does, you know? That's right. He's that's so right. good. And so, yeah. so I believe God gave you that dream just as a warning to help yeah. you to understand that it's a spiritual yeah. uh, battle yeah. and, and it, uh, to put safeguards in your life to sort yeah. of, to, um, to, to not open that door. You know, I, I don't know what phrase you use, but for me, I always see it in the form of open doors, you know, just to not Absolutely. open that door. Absolutely. It is. And that's that's exactly the way I understood that dream. And and I did. I left that doctor. And, you know, that's not to say that I'm not always without pain. But you know what? His grace is sufficient. That's right. And I believe God can bring you complete healing also and and give you grace you know in right. that situation and uh you know i i believe that god's not going to give us more than we can bear and uh, but i also believe he wants us to have a overcoming victorious yes. life and yes. um you know sometimes we have to lay hands on ourselves. <laughs> yes stir it up <laughs> that's right and so i tell you what um you know, there's there's so much power in dreams because, you know, had you not had that dream, uh, you you know, you might not have understood exactly right. what you were dealing with. And it did give imagery and sort of help you to understand that this has been a, uh, you know, a demonic yes. uh, influence and, a, and a str- had been previously a stronghold in your life. And I'm going to go as far as to even say because of the imagery in your dream, you know, a lot of people don't understand this, but um, there is a word in the Greek Bible in the New Testament called pharmakia. And it's a, where we get the word pharmacy. And it's also attached to the word in the Bible for witchcraft. Now, I'm going to say that when we abuse drugs, especially yeah. drugs that are in the psychotropic class, which are ones mm-hmm. that alter your mental state. Mm-hmm. Uh, when those are abused, I believe we can open a door to uh, witchcraft of the enemy and be um, under a higher level of demonic influence. Obviously, we call it DUI, driving under the influence. You know, right, right. Uh, the, the liquor stores are called. Uh, it'll say spirits on the mm-hmm. sign. I think it's pretty mm-hmm. obvious. You know, yep. no what secret. we're dealing with. No, yeah, it's all right in your face. It's in plain yep. view. And right. so um, so I believe that we uh, we fight, uh, you know, we actually don't have to fight that battle. Jesus fights it on right. our behalf. Right. But we have to stay in him, uh, yeah. in the Lord. We have to stay hidden in Jesus and 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 we resist the devil and he will flee and we speak his word and we obey his commands. And that mm-hmm. is what keeps us uh, from falling into previous strongholds in our life yeah. or into previous uh, inf- demonic influences or generational influences or mm-hmm. however you want to term and word it. Mm-hmm. But I definitely believe that was a prophetic dream that you had to, to help yeah. you to understand what you were dealing with. Mm-hmm. Yep, I do too. Well, that's a, uh, you know, I know you said you had a, a tight schedule today. I definitely wanted to have you on the program. Is there anything else you want to leave us with before we go or anything else uh, that you want to share? He is able. And even when we think, you know, he's he's not um, when we think that he's not really as as close as he is, that he really is there. You know, that it's us who's left, not him. And um I'm thankful that he's always there and working through even the small things like dreams in our lives. That's right. And I'm thankful for you and I'm thankful for the work that God's done in your life. Like I said, you know, I don't even associate you with uh, when you've told me things about your past. It's like it's another person that you're talking about. (laughs) It it is. It is. It is another person because the, um, uh, you know, God's done a work in you that's just amazing. And I'll say this to our listeners. God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for Lisa, he can do for you. And if you know someone who's uh, struggling with addiction, 
the the Lord wants to set people free. Yeah. He wants to bring healing to people's life. And I pray you don't have to go through being arrested or, or, or yes. things like that to, to sort of have your prodigal son moment and come to your senses. Um, you know, but and I can definitely endorse Teen Challenge. Uh, we've worked with their ministry before. It's a fantastic organization. It's not yeah. easy. <laughs> it's not going to be an easy road. <laughs> it's a one year commitment uh, minimum. I think sometimes it's a two year commitment. Right. But um, but it's a fantastic faith based program that I definitely mm-hmm. can endorse. And and I would just encourage you if you're faltering right now and you're a listener and you're on the fence or, you know, someone that's on the fence dealing with this, um, you know, go to church. <laughs> call a pastor, uh, you know, call Teen right. Challenge, Talk make a decision, you know, and, and the Lord can come into your heart and change your life and change your situation. And there is freedom and deliverance if you're yeah. struggling with those things. And Lisa, you're a living, breathing, walking testimony, a testament to how God can change, set free and deliver people. Yeah, he sure can. That's so awesome. Thank you so much for being on the program. I, I, I appreciate it so much. I'm so thank you. I know it's not easy to share a story like that. And thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll be informed next time I post. Thank you again and have a blessed day.